Having sharp tools is a really important part of woodworking. I was having problems with my sharpening solution, so I designed a sharpening stone holder to help improve my sharpening ability. I designed it in FreeCAD and then built it, so let's have a look at how I did it. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm going to help you learn FreeCAD so you can design the things that you've imagined. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing and liking the video. If you'd like to help me out financially, you can buy a cup of coffee through the link in the description below. Now let's get started. So you can see the flattening stone was unsecured, making flattening the stones difficult at best and impossible at worst when the fine stone kept sticking to the flattening stone. I couldn't seem to get a good flat surface and so my sharpening wasn't great and I was starting to pull my hair out. So I had to come up with something to solve this problem. This is my solution. The flattening stone is placed between the two sharpening stones, which are elevated to allow the backs of chisels and planes to be worked as well. You can see that the flattening stone is securely locked in place and does not move even when the fine stone is used. Both sharpening stones are easily accessible and the backs of chisels and planes can be easily worked, which makes sharpening that much quicker and easier. Best of all, the whole thing is firmly held in place on the bench and the stones can be easily removed for maintenance. Let's have a look at how I designed it. So this is an assembly of all the parts that make up the sharpening stone holder. And this is a view where I'm going to explode the assembly so you can see how all the parts go together. And then we'll look at how they were individually designed. I'm using a FreeCAD version 0.19 built on the 26th of November 2021 for this demonstration and I'm running it on Kubuntu Linux 20.04 LTS. I had a brain fart during the recording of this video. I kept saying that I was using a horizontal constraint when I was actually using a horizontal distance constraint. Similarly, I said the same thing when I was using a vertical distance constraint and called it a vertical constraint. You should be able to see in the video which constraint I'm actually using, but I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Before we start talking about the design of the individual parts that make up this sharpening stone holder, I just want to talk about something that I've been experimenting with of late. In my previous videos, you would have seen that I created a new file for every part that I designed, and it seemed to me that that might be a little bit inefficient. So what I've been trying to do of late is experiment with creating a single file that contains all the parts that make up the model. So this file contains the prototype that I used to build the sharpening stone holder. And there are a number of bodies that have been created inside the file. So the first one is Shapton stone, and that's just a simple representation of the Shapton stone that I use. Nothing fancy to that. Then I created another one called the flattening stone, which resembles my flattening stone and all I've been doing once I create a part is I just click on it and toggle the active body to turn it off and also toggle the visibility so that you cannot see it. This is the base and then we have the end blocks and so on and so forth. So as part of this demonstration I'm going to continue with this and show you how I've been working with multiple parts in a single file. So let's get started on that. So the first part that I'm going to create is the base. So we'll create the body. Then before I do anything else, I'm going to go to the model tab and I'm going to rename it. So what I do is I click on body, press F2, and then we just change the name to base. Come back to the tasks tab and we'll create a sketch on the XY plane. And we'll just draw a simple rectangle that will be symmetric around the origin point. And I've previously set up a spreadsheet that contains all the specifications for the model. So I'm just going to refer to that. And the length of the base and the width are calculated based on a bunch of other things that are in the spreadsheet such as the width of the stones, etc., And you can modify these as you need to to suit whatever stones you've got. So we'll set a horizontal constraint, set length. I'm not 
spice links. And we'll set the width of the base using a vertical constraint. Close that because we're fully constrained and then we will pad that out using the thickness defined in the, the spreadsheet. Base thickness. So now I'm going to put all the mounting holes in the base and there are several ways we could do this. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to switch to the prototype and you can see where all the holes are likely to be. This is the prototype. If you'll notice that the holes are all symmetric around the center line in both the horizontal and the vertical axis. We could simply just model all the holes and not worry about any other tools within the part design workbench. So the next option could be that I would model the holes on the left hand side of the vertical axis and then mirror them to the right. Another option is that I could model the holes in the top left corner and use the multi-transform tool to mirror them both horizontally and vertically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multi-transform tool. So to model the holes, I'm going to create a datum plane which should help me avoid the topological naming problem. And I'm going to create the datum plane on the base XY plane and then offset it using the thickness of the base of the sharpening stone holder so that it's in the right location. That was a bit of a mouthful, but I'll show you what I mean. It's much quicker than what I just said. So first all I'm going to do is turn on the origin. I'm then going to create a datum plane and I'm going to select it and attach it to the XY plane. And then in the Z direction, I'm going to use the spreadsheet to offset it by the thickness of the base. And what that'll do is it'll put it right on top of the base and I can turn the origin off because I no longer need it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on that datum plane. So I select the datum plane and then select create sketch. So the first hole I'm going to place is the mounting hole and this hole is used for mounting the base onto my bench and then i'm going to place the holes that are used to mount the sharpening stone bases and then i'm going to put the mounting hole for the flattening stones mounting bracket so the dowel hole used to mount the sharpening stone holder to my workbench is a 12 mil dowel so I'll set the diameter of that mounting hole to be 12 millimeters. And the other dowel holes are eight mil dowel holes. They're all the same. So first of all, I'm going to make an equals constraint and then I am going to set its diameter to, to be eight millimeters. These two dowel holes here for mounting the base of the sharpening stones are horizontally aligned. So we'll put in a horizontal constraint. The center point of the dowel that's used to mount it to my workbench is 15 millimeters in from each corner. So what we'll do is we'll use a horizontal distance constraint to set that from the origin point. And that's going to be determined by the length of the base. So it's base length on two, because we're only going halfway, minus 15 millimeters. Similarly, the mounting hole is 15 millimeters from the top. So we'll set a vertical constraint using the width of the base as the reference length. So it's going to be one half of the base width on two minus 15. So the mounting holes for the sharpening stone bases are 10 millimeters in from the edge of the sharpening stone base platform. So we'll use a horizontal constraint and use the width of the base of the sharpening stone holder minus 20 millimeters because we've got 10 from either side and that should make it about 101 millimeters and the sharpening stone base is flush with the short edge of the base of the stone holder so we will use a horizontal distance constraint to push that into alignment select the points And again, it's going to be half the, the base width minus 10. In fact, 
It should have been base length, not width. Fortunately, we can fix that. The sharpening stone bases are mounted symmetrically across the width of the, the base of the sharpening stone holder. So what we'll do is we will use a vertical constraint to pull that into position. So we select the points, use a vertical distance constraint. It's going to be half the, the base of the Shapton stone holder, as I've called it here. The length of that on 2 minus 10 millimeters. And the last thing we need to do is finish the mounting point here. The placement of the end block mounting hole for the flattening stone is 50 millimeters from the vertical axis. And there's a, I'm using a formula to calculate its vertical position because I need to take into account the wedges that will go on the other end and the angles involved there. So we'll put a horizontal constraint of 50 millimeters. And then we'll put a vertical constraint on from the spreadsheet. And now it's fully constrained. So I'll turn off the datum plane because I don't need that anymore. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create straight pockets for these because they, they're not countersunk or anything like that. And we're just going to push it to the first face it finds which is also the bottom. So now I'm going to use the multi-transform tool to create the remaining holes. So select the pocket, then start the tool. And then I'm going to add a mirrored transformation around the vertical sketch axis. And then I'm going to add another one around the horizontal sketch axis to give me the holes in each corner. And they're now all symmetrical as well. So that's completion of the base design. I talked a lot for very little outcome. It's much quicker, obviously, to draw this up and then use a multi-transform tool than it is to actually talk about it while you're doing it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the Shapton stone bases. I'm going to hide the base of the sharpening stone holder. Then I'm going to create a new part and I'm going to rename that to be Shapton stone base and we're going to create a sketch for it on the XY plane. And to make it easier for assembly later, I'm going to make it a vertical sketch rather than a, a horizontal one. Again, it's going to be centered symmetrically on the plane. Set the vertical and horizontal distance constraints. Shapton stone base length being the length of it. And similarly for the width, which needs to be a horizontal constraint, not a vertical one. And then we will pad that out to form the base. Chapter base thickness is what I'm looking for. And much like with the sharpening stone holder base, we're going to create a datum plane so we can put the mounting holes. So I turn on the origin again so we can see it. Then I'll select the base XY plane and create a datum plane. And then we will move it in the Z direction, the thickness of the Shapton stone base. And then we'll turn off the origin because we don't need it anymore. Then we'll select the datum plane and create a sketch. There'll be eight mounting holes drilled in this space. Four will be used for mounting it to the sharpening stone holder base, and the other four will be used for mounting the wedges and end blocks which hold the sharpening stone in place. They're all the same in that they're eight mil dowels. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before by placing several holes, and then we'll use the multi-transform tool to place them in the correct location. The hole at the top is used for mounting the end block or the end wedge. This hole here is used for mounting the Shapton stone base to the sharpening stone holder base. So let's place the end block hole first and it's going to be 10 millimeters in from the side of the Shapton stone. So what we're going to do is create a horizontal distance constraint which is half the width of the Shapton stone minus 10 millimeters. And then we're going to place it 10 millimeters from the top edge. So the length on 2 minus 10. 
And now we're going to place the hole which is used to mount this bay to the sharpening stone holder base. Again, it's going to be 10 millimeters from this long edge. So we use a horizontal distance constraint for that. Chapter base width on two minus on two minus ten. And the hole is 20 millimeters from the horizontal edge. So we use a vertical distance constraint to set that. Chapter base length on two minus twenty. And again, I'm just going to use a pocket to go through the whole thing. And we'll turn the datum plane off because we don't need it. And then we will use the multi-transform tool again, just to mirror it in both directions. And because we can't see very well, what I'm going to do is come down to the view tab down the bottom here, and we're going to change the transparency to about 50%. Just to make it a little bit easier to see those holes, you can see they're in the right place. Now, the rest of the design is pretty much rinse and repeat. So I'm not going to go through how I did the wedges and, and so on because it's a very simple design. But what I will do is show you how I assembled this. So in order to do that, I'm just going to grab the parts out of my prototype and I'm going to bring those across. So I've got something to work with. If you'd like to build your own version of this sharpening stone holder, you can download free plans from the link in the description below. Now we have a quick look at the how I assembled it. I used the A2 Plus workbench for my assemblies. So what I need to do first of all is create a new model and I do need to save that. And I'm just gonna call it recorded assembly. I'm gonna switch over to the A2 Plus workbench and then I'm going to start importing parts. Now, before I start assembling things, I need to make sure that all the parts are visible. So I'm just gonna go through and turn them all on. Then I'll go back to the assembly and I will import them from recorded. And then you'll see it's given me all the parts that are in the file. So I'm just gonna select them and import them all. And I'm just going to move them around as they've come in, just so I've got something to work with. Now, you'll notice that they've only got one end block for the flattening stone and one set for the shapton stone and one shapton stone holder. In order to duplicate them is I'm going to select a part and then I'm going to use the duplicate tool. And I'm just going to move it to a slightly different location. And now what I'm going to do is start assembling it. I'm going to select one of the mounting holes for the Shapton stone base, and then I'm going to select the corresponding hole on the bottom of the Shapton stone base by pressing the control key and then selecting the object. Then I'm going to use the create access to access constraint. I'm going to accept that. And what it's done is it's aligned the two holes vertically. What I found is that I need to do both holes. So I'm going to do it again on the other mounting hole. And the reason for that is that I found that because it's a circular constraint effectively, you can actually get it to rotate when you are constraining parts together, which is not really what I wanted. Now I need to make sure that I've got the faces aligned correctly. So I'll select the top face of the base and the bottom face of the stone holder, and then we'll use a coincident plane constraint. We'll accept that. Now, as you can see, something has gone wrong. This mount, these mounting holes are fine, but these ones are not, which means that the holes in the base are in the wrong place, I would think. So I need to open my model again. I'm gonna turn off all the stuff I don't want and we'll come back to the base and we'll check to see where I got the sketch wrong. Something to do with this formula here. What do we set that to? OK, 
Okay, that's fine. So maybe it's actually in the Shepton stone base. And it's this one here. Oh, I know what I've done wrong. <laughs> All right. So basically, it don't need the holes to be different like that. They can actually just have a horizontal constraint pulling them together so that they're the same distance because this one will be trimmed flush once it's constructed and this one will be used to mount something on top so they're not going to conflict with each other. So I can make the change there, go back to my assembly and using the update part tool, we can update the parts, but as you can see, we have got some constraint errors. So it means we're going to have to do some modifications again. To be honest, it does become a bit of a pain in the ass, some of this. I need to make all the parts visible so that the A2 Plus workbench can import or update them. I can reload the parts once I've made them visible. And I've deleted the constraints. So we just go through that again and fix it up. But what I'll do to show you that it's fixed is we'll do it with the other shaft and stone holder. So we select that part there. That one there. We'll use the circular edge constraint in this case. You see it's pulled it pretty much straight into position. The holes line up in both cases. But the thing is, as I was saying earlier, it would be better to make sure it's fully constrained because at the moment, if I turn on the degrees of freedom display, this one's got one degree of freedom, so it can still move around. It's not fixed fully to the assembly. As you can see, this one's free, even though it looks like it's sitting in the right place. So what I will do is it will select that base and we'll use the transform tool just to move it off a little bit and make it so that we can actually get to the faces relatively easily. And we're just gonna make sure that the top face of the, the sharpening stone holder base and the bottom face of this stone holder are coincident. And then turn off degrees of freedom. If I turn it back on again, so you can see it's got one degree of freedom and I suspect that's because it can still rotate. So again, what we'll do is we will move the part using the transform tool and then we'll just constrain it again. Turn off the degrees of freedom. And now you can see it's fully constrained and it's not going to move. Similarly, we can do the same thing with the wedges. So what we'll do is we will select one for a Shapton stone. Right, we'll do it all on the one that's fixed. So I find that I spend a lot of time just moving through different views doing this. There could be a better way of doing it. I'm always willing to learn new ways of doing things. So please leave me a comment if you have a different way of doing this. Turn on degree of, turn off degree of freedom and turn it back on again. So you see in this case, it's still got one degree of freedom and that will be the fact that I haven't made these two faces coincident. So it's just a matter of simply placing all the parts. Now, the other way you could do this, save you doing all the zooming and rotating and so on, is to put it into wireframe mode. But... I must confess that sometimes I get lost. Sometimes it makes it very hard to see what feature I'm actually trying to constrain. Which is why I sometimes just put up with my poor navigation in, and rotation and that sort of thing. Now, I'm not going to model the dowels and stick those in. That can be left as an exercise for you to, to play with, but you can see pretty much how I went about doing this. Would it have been easier to do it in paper? Probably. This is such a simple model, it probably could have been done that way. But I wanted to show how I approached this and how I went about designing it and then assembling it. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please click the like button below 
and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you'd like to support the channel financially, there is a link in the description below where you can buy me a cup of coffee. You can download the plans for this sharpening stone holder through the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.